Hi, I'm Fiona and this is yet another character design video by me, Fiona Creates. Um, I never ever ever plan anything in my head down that road leads to disappointment. I know roughly what I'm going to go for. In this case I wanted a very tall, sleek, dark character. Other than that I didn't know what any of the details would look like, uh, what her weapon would be, anything like that, so I just started scouring the internet for references and just mood board things which I took you around very briefly. Um, I keep flicking back and forth between the sketch and various parts of the mood board. Um, I collect things like hairstyles, details, um, bits of armour here, bits of fashion because this particular series that I've been working on is uh, where couture meets armour and fantasy. Uh, none of the pieces are particularly um, viable as armour, they're not particularly protective, but they're a lot of fun and to me that's more important for this kind of work than having something that is actually all that useful. Um, it's about uh, coming up with something really cool and fun and something that I've enjoyed to draw which matters to me more than anything. I'm not creating characters for a particular story to have a particular function they are here to look good and make me happy which they do um, this particular design uh, is a very vertical um, sleek design which is what I had in my head uh, so all the things that I picked from the mood board support this but in order to just break it up a little I use the axe horizontally I give a slightly bigger hair just so that it's not like a vertical wine fest. Um, it's, I'd seen this axe uh, with all the patterning and things on it and I thought that would be really awesome to add to something that this particular series has a lot of armour with um, engraved patterning on it. So this is tying it back to others that I've drawn um, while making it a unique piece in its own right. Uh, I try not to bring up too much of the other pictures I've drawn already so that I don't just keep repeating the same motif so that each piece is unique. Uh, this particular time I decided to try a slightly different uh, style of colouring it in. I started by just silhouetting the whole drawing and then filling in the middle of the silhouette because I wanted the whole thing to feel dark and not have much um, tone fluctuation. Uh, I decided this would be a good way to check that the shape was working and then slowly fill everything in. My drawings are all fairly fluid, uh, I don't plan very well, I get bored. Um, as a sort of painter I've found that when you work on top of a sketch when you're doing something traditionally you lose a lot of the details anyway so I've learned over time not to um, rely too much on your sketch and just build it up as it goes uh, and this is something that I've brought into my digital artwork even though I can see my sketch at all times and I could put more detail into that. I just enjoy doing it this way. Um, again it's no secret that I don't use line art. Uh, I often put the lines back in after I'm done but generally it's about the shape and the feel and um, getting the composition right and I find that heavy solid black line art round everything distorts the composition and sort of lies to your eye and things because you tend to want to look at whatever's brightest or darkest in an image. If I put black lines around everything it would flatten everything out and destroy any of the depth that I've put in it. Although this is just a figure so there's not that much depth uh, in it. I do want there to feel like the hair is falling behind the shoulder or whatever. Although I think this is the point when I just decided this hairstyle isn't working and cut off half of it anyway. Um, what you don't see in this process is this is done in a, about two or three sittings of about half an hour each. And uh, when I come back I often look at the image and go oh no that isn't working and change a whole bundle of it. Uh, which in this case was the hair. I'd wandered off to eat dinner and came back and decided the hair didn't look good anymore. So I changed it. It's uh, in my opinion, it's never too late to change anything in a design. Um, if you're unhappy, don't finish it and put it online with a comment going, oh yes, yeah, it's, it's not my best work. Just change it or, you know, start a new one or whatever. You'll be much happier in the long run for it and you'll be much prouder of what it is that you're making. 
Uh, in this particular one, I was doing a little bit of an experiment with some more painted features. Uh, I usually work very flat, uh, but I, I can paint. Um, I want to kind of find a balance. So this is a small experiment as to where I can balance between having the softer painted features and the harder edges that you'll see in like so the armor and the rest of the clothing. Um, there's not much I can say really about this little bit other than I just keep fiddling and changing the shape. Um, the reason I keep zooming out is because to me the overall shape, the silhouette is very important and if that doesn't sit right then the hairstyle's not right or uh, whatever that it is that I'm fixing in this case it is the hair. Um, I still keep referring back to my mood board because that's where all my details are, that's where all my ideas have come from so why would I keep ignoring it? Um, mood boarding is a very important thing to me, uh, to some people it's not. Um, I don't take a single image and just copy it because then that's just copying an image. Um, I sort of go, oh this shape's quite nice or you know this sleeve design is quite nice and then I kind of merge it all together or even I design something completely new but I really love the the shape of something like in this case the, the skirt I was enjoying in the, the couture a lot of the very long flowing light material so I just took that but it didn't fit in with the design that I wanted with a little bit of exposed chain mail and the shoes and the legs so I made my own um, cut up there there was no nothing in my mood board that had this exact skirt um, it was just something that I made um, again with even though this is all dark the tones that I've put across it still matter um, so I've kept the armor quite dark um, but that highlights the chest the hands and then the, the shoes uh, all the material is fairly light but in places if I wanted to draw attention to it I might make it darker or if I want to draw attention to it I might make something lighter like so for the cheekbones around the eyes there's um, there's nothing that says you can't uh, do that I have another picture that I did just before this one unfortunately I didn't video it where it was all plain white um, and I did the same thing with that only with pale tones rather than the dark tones um, at this point it all kind of feels black to me rather than grey but yet you can still add a lot of fluctuation and detail in here um, again this is where I bring in some of the more fashion elements into the armour um, some sort of chains and details and sort of a jewellery feel uh, there's nothing wrong with uh, doing that there was uh, the design that I was going to put on the axe I started to bring into the armour um, and just buckles and bright things and all the shiny things to draw your attention to them um, plus it's just fun to make swirls and things like that this is not really a, a character from a world or from a story or anything like that which leads me to a lot of freedom because the only thing this character exists for is to look good in this particular image um, I do sell these characters so eventually somebody else might transform them into something else so I want them to be a really good baseline platform give them a, a rough personality through their pose through their stance but without too many details because I want the people who are paying me money for them to allow themselves to uh, be able to put their own ideas into it um, in this case I hope she comes across fairly sort of strong and powerful but yet relaxed um, she's not about to go into battle but she is kind of staring you down out the page um, how I would draw weaponry is again I start from a silhouetted shape uh, just because it's easiest uh, to work this way and for something like this because it has to be straight I can use the straight line tool and then start erasing the more organic shapes out of it rather than um, trying to draw sort of it all together it means I also get the right angle so the axe head isn't like a funny angle I've been known to do that before as well um, again I was going back to the reference so that I could get the designs and things um, I didn't want the axe head itself to be the dark black metal that I used in the other things because it would just be this dark blob hovering off to the side so I made that quite pale but I didn't want it to be bright shiny pale metal either because then it wouldn't match the rest of the design uh, so I went for this kind of mid-tone 
sort of colour. It was more similar to the, the tone of the skin. I brought back the, um, the leaf design that I had used on the chest and put it onto the plate of the um, axe here. I don't think it's a particularly functional axe, but I don't think the axes that I used as reference were particularly functional either. Uh, there is a particular period in history uh, where there was a lot of unfunctional weaponry being made for the rich people who probably never actually used it, just wandered around with it or hung it on their wall. Um, and of course this is fantasy so I can do whatever I want. Um, again, if this was a functional character I might think more along the lines of functional weaponry, but you know, this is a piece of standalone art, let's have fun. I keep repeating that, don't I? Uh, I did bring in on another layer, one of the previous ones I'd done because I did want to bring back in the red colour so I keep she keeps flashing up while I nick colours off that drawing. Um, I here was just adding in some extra highlights and shapes that weren't quite right. Um, and again, you can draw attention to things like the face by framing it with a little bit of highlights and things. I found the eyes the wrong shape, so I fixed them. Um, so yeah, this is me pretty much done with this design. I added a tiny bit of uh, red gradient creeping up from the bottom of the drawing uh, so that it didn't feel completely flat, uh, adding in a few last minute uh, reddish details, but I didn't want them to stand out uh, a lot with their bright red, but I didn't want to not have them there either because the rest of the designs all use these red tones through them. And this is the final design with a couple of uh, close-ups so that you can see what I was up to. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope uh, that within my ramblings you found something interesting or something to learn. Um, and if you liked this video, uh, please hit subscribe and maybe check out some of my other videos. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.